Hey guys, it's happening. So, I thought I'd give you another status update. So I'm just going to keep on giving you guys status updates once I design something or change something. Um, you know, things I find that are uh, issues and stuff. So, um, I'm actually having issues with these agus bearings, these, these plastic bushings, you know. Um, just binding and stuff. And once I actually added this other bushing to the filament, it came a little bit more tight. And I'm trying to get it dialed in. And it just, from the get-go, they weren't right. I, I'd either crush them too much. I'd like, mess with the diameter here. Um... So I'm going to start exploring different options, and I'll show you what i got going here. Yeah, I just, I don't know, man. They just bind up. It's it's hard to deal with them. It's either either I have to crush it down too tight or not tight enough. Um, you know, changing the diameter of, of the hole, and I'll show you that. So, like, changing this diameter here. Um, these are different designs I'm, I'm working on and different things. So I'm exploring different options. This is actually what I use on the extruder. And, you know, this is oil-wrapped bronze or graphite insert, self-lubricating. Um, and then I got this other pair, um, you know, but these are actually really heavy. I liked how wide they were because it would actually give it better control like this way. Um, but they're really heavy, you know. So I might go back to this lighter one, the thinner one, uh, on the, on the XY, the rails. Um, but let me show you the weight wise. So I got, I got a pair of that. So I even printed out all the parts for them, but I don't know, man. This, this is the, I mean, put the, turn this thing on. This is like some extreme weight, though, which I don't want to do, you know, because I'm going from these plastic bushings, which are really, like, basically a featherweight. So if I went with the oil wrap bronze, these are uh, 8 by 12 by 40. Like I said, I do actually like how wide they are because it would have give it more control, wrap control. But at the same time, we added an insane amount of weight to it. So, I mean, the box adds about a 0.2. So let me show you. The, the box probably has any weight to it. You know, point two. So, um, and in comparison, I have the LM. I think I call LM eight UU or LM U eight eight. Oh my God, it's the uh, ML later rod. So the 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 actual bearings themselves. If I were to go this route, this would only be two ounces here. Um, um, but if I actually I might go this route I mean, since I already have these already. Or I mean, I I have one already. I can, I can at least test it. So that's point two. So uh, you know, times four, that would be like point eight, you know, point eight, and versus I'd actually be adding you know, minus a little bit of a plastic bag, but so I'd probably be adding an ounce. Yeah, I think these are just. I mean, I, I actually like these, but they're just that's like that's a lot of weight, you know. Especially if you're going to be changing directions, going into a corner. You know, you have to factor in all the extra weight. So, yeah, because I'm going to be taking this into extreme speed. So it's like all this, all these little things actually matter. Um, I mean, if you want to have any sort of decent quality print at those super high speeds, you, I mean, all this stuff, even just the amount of screws that you have, makes a difference. So, all right. So I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these things. Maybe take them back. Maybe send them back to Amazon. Get some more of these smaller ones. I mean, I do like the fact that they're thicker. You know, you'd have longer time to wear, but it's like, I don't know. Weight is, uh, that's horrible weight. So, do I go with the bearings and just get over it? But these things are noisy. These things are crazy noisy. Especially, I can't imagine when they're going to be at high speed. I mean, you just, these are the same bearings I wore on my 3D printers from 10 years ago. So, um, it's funny how they went back. They went from linear rails or linear rods to linear rails and then back to linear rods again. All right, so, yeah, I mean, I see, but there's benefits and negative ups and downs with both, both systems, um, mainly like alignment. Like when you have a round rod, it's easier to control the alignment, you know, because it wants to, you know, it go, well, I won't get into it, it wants to go to the highest edge. So, all right, so that's where I'm at with that. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with this thing. Yeah, here, here's the Igus. Those plastic bushings. But the issue with these ones, man, is like when you crush on them, it becomes it, it, this thing. These are very resistive, so they they I guess grabby. What's I'm trying to think of the word? They want to grab onto the rod. You know what I mean? And it becomes really hard to push, uh, especially once you start getting any sort of like resistance or twist in the rod. You know, if you get any sort of twist in the rod, you know, it, it wants to grab. You know what I mean? It's 
I mean, these, these things are basically good for, like, if you have no resistance at all on the rail. You know, it, it can go back and forth fast, but once you put up resistance, it wants to twist and bind. I think the word was bind. Um, Alright, so... Alright, let me go with the... Uh, I gotta figure out how to do this. I mean, I could redesign the whole gantry, I guess, but... Alright, so here is the Ron's Bush. My, control, my concern with this one is wrap control. Like, it wanted to wrap this way. And if it wants to wrap, I'm worried about um, premature wear of this bearing, you know? I mean, it, I did design to pop off and change the rails pretty fast, but maybe in a future revision I can maybe create a thing where I can just pop the rails out, some kind of locking mechanism to pull the rails out. But really, right now, I just got to pop four screws off and a couple screws I can get the rails out and change the bearings. So I'm thinking the ball bearings are going to be noisier, but they're going to have better wrap control because they're going to be resting on bearings that are rotating so they're going to evenly wear out you know it's not going to put so much wear in one area you know <clears throat> because if you look at the rods up here they're not exactly parallel with the well the top one is parallel with the, with the rod but the bottom one isn't so the bottom one's going to have more wrap when I want to push this forward um, you know in the y direction it's going to want to wrap up I guess I could design this thing bring the rod up so they're kind of more evenly distributed amongst the rods you know instead of actually being like this is parallel with a rod here maybe bring this one up a little bit you'd still have wrap yeah it's a hard toss up man with this I mean the different kind of bearings here I mean that definitely feels the smoothest I mean the thing is the problem with the, like I said, the I guess is if you crush them at all they want to bind so you can't crush them at all, but at the same time, it, it, there's a little bit more slop in the I guess, but um, uh, here is the... I'm actually going to take these off and clean them, but some of these are actually tighter than the others. These are like some cheap XL or whatever. Obviously, it's a lot more noise, but I mean, basically, I'm never going to have to replace these things because, I mean, this... I've, been, I've run probably 10,000 prints on this thing. The old printer bot, and I've never had to change the bearings of this thing. I lube them, um, but I won't get too much in lubrication. But you don't really want to grease these. I mean, it's all in the air. It depends who you talk to. But if you grease these things, some people say white lithium grease. I don't. I don't grease these because the problem is if you grease them, it's going to create a lot of resistance. Plus, it's going to prevent those balls from spinning there. If you can see that. And you want those balls to move around. Because if, if it's grease, those things aren't going to spin around freely. It, they're not going to do what they're supposed to do. So I'm going to dip these in some alcohol. Get whatever's in there out of there. And then um, I'm going to lube it with some Triflo. Um, or something with PTFE, you know, like Teflon. Um, and then, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be gaining some noise. But another thing, too, is I'm going to mark it. Once I get it clean, I'm going to mark it where. Like, you want to have those... See, there's four rows of bearings. You want to have that separated between the two, so you're getting as much bearing contact as possible. Um, kind of like split between the center. So you want the... Whatever side the load is at, you want the load distributed between two rows of bearings instead of just one. I have one of these, I guess, things to work, but... I, you know, I actually... The reason why I even have these is because I bought these probably five years ago. And I actually had them for one of my other printers. Um, trying to make it quieter, you know, but... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. They didn't work then, and they don't work now. So, I mean, I want them to work because they're so light. But if you put these in any, 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 under any sort of weird direction or load, they want to bind really easy. Plus, um, back in the day, we used to zip tie these things onto on the carriages and get them to zip tie correctly without over tension it was a headache. So, right, so he's been going for a while. Um, I've been periodically going up and down the bearing, you know, riding up and down the bearing to get any sort of grease. I want to like rotate the wheels, the ball bearings. Around. And one thing I noticed, like when I first got them, you couldn't hear the rattle. And you want to be able to hear that rattle. Like I said, I don't want any sort of grease preventing the rotation of the, of the bearings. So um, I'm going to let this soak for a little bit longer. Then I'll blow out my air compressor. And then I'm going to um, put a, like a little usable my triflow. 
just put like a little bit down on each row of bearings. A little tab. I'm gonna go down each row of bearing and then I'm gonna work it in on the on the rod. Now, this might seem like overkill, but I, I keyed them. So I know what side to keep put up. Because I want to get in between those ball rails here. I mean I want to have even distribution between the the, the balls. And if I, I figure if I mark it with a sharpie, right? The oil might take off the ink of the sharpie so I lose a position. So if I ever have to like mess with it, you know, you're not gonna be able to see those balls once they're in the rail, right? So if I ever like take the thing apart and I lose position, I always know exactly that that should be on the top, that little key. That will give me good ball distribution. I mean, these things will quiet down over time. Yeah, I couldn't do that before with the, what's it called, the, uh, the I guess bearings, the plastic bearings, because it just gets bound up. It's not got... All right, good. Well, and then what, I don't know if I, well, one of my last videos, I, I upgraded to a double bushing up here. And when I did that, I actually created a lot more binding with the eye guess. That's why I had to do this. I'm pretty happy with that result. Okay, over time, this will work themselves in. Alright. I'm going to do a test access to break in the access. Uh, I'm not gonna, it's not going to be printing filament. I just want to actually check the movement. So on here, I'm going to do the original, the original big spiral that goes around the bed. Okay. That's kind of messing around all this stuff. Yeah, this thing's working pretty good now. Well, hopefully it'll work with this, but like every single, I'm dialing in this printer, like slicer settings and jerk settings and prints are getting better and better. This should definitely, I'm thinking, improve it a lot, so. I'm not too hit in the bed. Yeah, definitely more vibration now. So I, I designed this circle to go through the whole thing, you know. I mean, it's way more precise, but it's a lot more vibration. You hear that vibration? That's in the bearings. Yeah, I know it's one of my lights is... I must have knocked it out somewhere in the wire when I was pulling it apart. I think I have to resolder that. That one works still. Yeah, I feel like the print quality is going to be a lot better when I uh, put these new modifications. I mean, it was actually getting better and better. I mean, it was actually almost, it was actually acceptable. But I want this to be perfect at low speeds because once I start ramping it up to crazy speeds, it's gonna make a difference. All right, so I'm doing a little test run here. Yeah, this is only 112 millimeters a second. Not very fast. But I'm kind of doing them all the same so I can figure out like, uh, you know, what change I'm making here. Like, uh, not really the slicer so much, but really just like, uh, uh, printer settings. Well, this is kind of funny. The quality actually looks like it went down over here. Might be able to see that, but yep. So you can see, kind of see the progression. I have it going through here. So I know what change I make. You know, going back where it started. Um, horrible. You know, the first one. Um, you know, this is horrible cooling. So I guess I've been kind of modifying the cooling. So I really haven't done. Too much tuning, a little bit of pressure advance. Um, but yeah, that's interesting how it went further backwards. Like the quality of the print was better with the Igis and the uh, single uh, wire bushing. So, alright, guys. Spent the whole weekend dialing this thing in. I feel like my thing is over extruding a little bit, so I'm trying to dial in the extrusion. I don't really like how this, there's just like a little slight kind of waviness to the parts. Um, this is before I actually had made the modifications to bearings. So it seemed to print a little bit better with uh, without the ball bearings, with the, the um, LMU, LM8UU bearings, but um, yeah, I mean, this went all the way from 80% or flow rate to 92. 
So, I mean, there's a little, yeah, definitely improved. I got down to about 80%, so I don't know what's going on with the BMG, you know. I had the rotational, same rotational um, that I would have on my printer rod or any sort of BMG. I know it's Bowden, so I have to kind of compensate for that, but. Um, all right, so I decided maybe I just need to break in the variance, maybe. So I'm going to run a print. All right, then I'll spend the rest of the week trying to figure it out, run test prints. Um, yeah, I don't expect, I mean, it's going to be not as precise as like linear rails, but um, like this stuff right here. But I mean, it will be a little bit more play than linear rail. Like there's like no play in this thing at all, barely enough. So, but yeah, I mean, there's other, I mean, printers like Bamboo Labs can, you know, make insane prints on a carbon fiber rod, so. Um, all right, just chipping away at it. All right, guys, have a good weekend.